I'm going to cover the evolution of the horse. The horse's earliest ancestor is the Hierocatherium or Eohippus, which means dawn horse. They lived 55 million years ago and were about the size of a dog. They had four toes on each front foot and three on their back feet. His jaws had incisors, cuspids, which are fangs, molars, and premolars. These were the typical teeth of an omnivorous organism. Hierocatherium evolved as its surroundings changed. The berries and easier to chew plants were replaced by tougher plants in its environment. A few of the Hierocatherium had a molar rather than a premolar. This meant that they had four molars per side rather than three, allowing them to eat more. These Hierocatherium were able to get more food and pass this mutation on. This process is called natural selection and means organisms better adapted to the environment tend to survive and produce more offspring. This particular adaption was caused by the availability of food. This caused the Orohippus to branch from the Hierocatherium. It had four molars and two premolars, meaning they had one more grinding tooth for eating, along with stronger cusps on molars. Over time, Epihippus came from Orohippus, and yet another premolar became a molar. That means that the Epihippus had five grinding molars on each side of their jaws. More molars meant they could eat even tougher foods and produce successfully. The Epihippus had longer legs in addition to their extra molar. This, too, was caused by natural selection. The North American climate was becoming much drier and grasses were just starting to evolve, while larger forests were beginning to shrink. The Epihippus were able to take advantage of the open grasslands, allowing them to be more successful and causing their children to inherit their longer legs and extra molar. The availability of food and climate are what spurred this particular evolution. With longer legs came speed, but also came increased height. This made hiding from grassland predators difficult. The faster Epihippus were able to outrun predators, allowing them to, again, reproduce and pass on even longer legs. That meant that this adaption was influenced by the predators, thus the Mesohippus were created. They lived about 35 million years ago. Mesohippus means middle horse. Mesohippus were slightly larger than Epihippus with even longer legs. Their backs were less arched, giving them more speed and the ability to run longer. Their necks and faces lengthened as the legs lengthened, allowing it to still reach food without having to bend down. From Mesohippus came Mary Chippus. They lived about 25 million years ago. This is considered a milestone of the horse evolution because, despite it still having three toes, it looked much like the modern horse, and walked on its dominant middle toe. The Mary Chippus broke away from living in forest completely and ran across plains, grazing the grass instead. It was large and fast. Its strong, sturdy legs were needed in order to carry this larger animal across the grasslands. Availability of food influenced this adaptation and is also why it moved to living in plains in the first place. Mary Chippus evolved into Pelohippus, which lived about 7 million years ago and is the last evolution before the modern horse. Its name means more horse. It too lived in grasslands and it was the first horse to have a single toe. They needed one strong toe to support their heavy bodies. Horses without feet properly adapted to running, with short legs and multiple toes weren't able to keep up and reproduce successfully. Finally, over the last few million years, Equus, which is the modern horse, was born. Equus is generally larger than the Pelohippus, and there are only a few anatomical differences that separate the two. They appeared about 5 million years ago. Equus, as most of you probably know, have long necks accompanied by long faces. They are large, fast animals, and generally grow to be around 6 to 7 feet long. Living relatives of the Equus are zebras, sheep, mules, donkeys, camels, gazelles, goats, giraffes, moose, and deer.